Alberta teachers are showing incredible creativity and ingenuity as they manage the realities of teaching and learning with COVID-19. In this short video, you'll hear a short interview with two Alberta teachers, uh, Jody Hernick and Catherine Wojcikowski, as they describe how they managed uh, what was typically an in-person uh, reading week-long activity at their school by using creative digital resources and tools. Welcome everybody. My name is Danny Moss and I'm a staff officer on the professional development team at the Alberta Teachers Association and joining me today are two outstanding teachers in Alberta from Edmonton Catholic Schools, uh, Catherine Wojcikowski and Jody Nahernik. So welcome ladies. Thank you. Thanks. So um, you've created some awesome resources in reading for your teachers recently. I was wondering if you might want to chat a little bit about what brought you to that, what the, the inspiration was, and then maybe just share a little bit about the resources themselves. Sound good? Sounds good. Um, so we started with the, or we had the task of creating a reading week activity, um, which this year during COVID um, and being a closed campus was gonna be a little bit more trickier than um, previous years. We couldn't get those guest speakers in to, um, visit with our students and to get them excited, excited about reading. So uh, we had to look at it with a different lens. Uh, so we decided we would create a bingo sheet uh, with 25 activities for our teachers to pick and choose from to lead their, the students through a variety of activities that would get them excited about reading. Sounds exciting. Uh, why don't you share a little bit? So we created, um, we took the theme of Reading Week this week, which was to travel around the world. So we created a Google Slides. Um, we created a Google Slides that could be shared for our online teachers and for our in-class teachers, um, whatever way that they needed, if they felt that they could share it. So we created a, or we found a, world map and then we linked using a box and we turned the box a shape and we turned the box to transparency um, and then we were able to link YouTube videos that we were able to find on the internet to specific countries so if you go to Australia and you click Australia it took you to an Australian book um, and we found it on YouTube, which we found was really helpful. And it's great to link YouTube videos to Google Slides now. Um, there's a format section that you can now pick when you want the video to start and when you want the video to end. So you can kind of cut out um, some of those extra, oh, follow me, things that YouTubers uh, like to add. So you can kind of cut those things out. So I'll show you another country and then what we found was really beneficial so if we go to Canada it took you to a promise is a promise what we found really um really helpful was that um kids were able to explore themselves um find countries that they might have found interest in so we focused a lot on grade three where they talk about the four countries India Tunisia um Peru and Ukraine and then we also tried to pocket some of our nationalities so we have a lot of um, Filipino in our school so we found a book from um, the Philippines and we were able to link it um, so that was kind of how we embraced the theme reading around the world so then another activity that we had was uh, using the smart notebook software um, and I've been a user of that notebook software for a very long time. I really, really love the features that are in there. Um, it makes it very interactive for kids um, and very engaging, which is always a plus for me. Um, and so last year I had the opportunity to join a professional development to dig deeper into this resource. And um, there's a new feature with the smart learning suite online that just um, takes lots of the features um, to devices that students are using and just makes it a whole lot better. It opens a whole lot of doors. Um, so 
I'll just take you through some of the uh, activities that are available in the Smart Notebook. And they're actually available in the like desktop version that you can use. And they're also available through the Smart Learning Suite online. And it just depends how you wanna, how you wanna run, it, run it in your classroom. Um, so the first one that you see here is um, just uh, shout it out. So you can ask a question and students can um, put their answers in and you can choose text or pictures. So they can um, take a picture and submit that or they can just write text. And it also lets you have some uh, categories so you can categorize it and they can choose what category it goes into. So that's shouted out and that's one of the activities that's in there. Um, Another and students can connect from any device. Is that right, Jody? They can. So we're a one-to-one -one school. We have iPads and we have some Chromebooks and they are able to connect with both devices. Um, so it makes it very, very helpful um, and just very interactive if, if you have access to some devices. Um, this is a uh, match it up. And so it is, you can use text and pictures again. Um, and it is just dragging the pictures over to match them. And if they're matched, they jump into a box. And if they're not matched, they jump back out. And so it's self-marking. You don't have to really supervise the children. They can do it on their own, which was nice for read and week. It was just, you could give them the activity and this is something that they could do on their own. And just, it marks it automatically for them. Um, another activity that is available is the fill in the blanks. So you can write out the paragraph, you choose what words you want as the blanks, and then the students can again, drag those words into the blanks and it's self-marking again. So it's just another activity just to help them review. And to be honest, I use it in lots of my other classes as well. And it's just, it's self-marking, but it's a fun way for the kids to review. They love it. It's very fun and engaging, which is helpful. And they're, they're reviewing the content at the same time, which is, is very, very good. Um, the next one is a label review. And so this is just, I just took some text features and they can work with a partner or they can just think to themselves, what would I call this? And it's just self-checking. So this is a heading, this is a, a chart or a graph. So again, another self-check thing, but just another way for them to review some material that you've already covered with them um, and just a fun way that they can check it over. Uh, this is just um, a, an ordering thing. So the first thing that happened and then, so we just did the story of the three little pigs and you can move the different um, events into the order. And again, it will mark it and it's another self-paced uh, activity that they can do on their own. The other thing that I've done with this in math is I've moved it to least and greatest. So they could order numbers from least to greatest or greatest to least. Um, you can choose those words that go there. And so the possibilities are endless really and what you can do with it. If you have another idea you wanna try with it. Um, this is just a sorting thing. So you again can choose the two columns that you're sorting into. So I just chose fiction and nonfiction. You can make them anything you want. Um, and you can make this text or you can make it pictures and it's just dragging it into the box it goes into. Another self-checking independent thing that they can do um, because they will disappear if it, they get it right and it'll bounce it back out to give it back to them if it's not correct. So um, the last part that I wanna just talk about briefly is when you move it onto a smart learning suite online, you have the option to make a page you already have, um, an individual activity or a group project type of thing. And I really like this because on the iPads, the kids can use their fingers to draw things. So when I need them to draw something like for circuits we just did, and they need to use symbols when they draw their circuits, I was able to have a picture of the circuit I wanted them to draw using the symbols and they were able to use their finger on the iPad to draw out what it looks like. So then I can see their thinking or when we do math, if there's a math talk we're doing, sometimes I'll get them to do the math talk on there and the questions posed there. But if there's something they wanna draw, they can draw it when we do this uh, individual activity, which is very helpful. And then as a teacher, I can just go in and check each kid and see what they've done. So I'd like it as an assessment tool, to be honest with you, um, just because I can see what they've done. But even on the fly, I can sometimes ask the kids a question and they can answer it. And then I get all of the kids engaged this way instead of just the couple hands that go in the air that you always tend to pick. I have all of the kids answer the question and then I can ask them who would like me to share their answer. And then I can choose the kid that I wanna share. Um, but it gets everyone engaged at the initial point, which is nice. Instead of just a couple of students doing the work, it's, it's everybody doing a part. And then they can compare their answer to whoever has shared and we can discuss further. But it's just a nice way to, to see their thinking.
Wonderful. So um, do you have any tips for advice for other teachers who might want to venture into this space, whether it's uh, creating the interactive Google Slides with the YouTube videos or something with Smart Learning Suite Online? Any, any advice for others wanting to try this kind of thing out? So Smart Learning Suite Online has actually a whole database of activities that are already created that you can go to to grab for free. Um, so if it's something that you're interested in, I would absolutely consider um, checking that out. Uh, it's the Smart Exchange and there is a ton of stuff. Um, they encourage you to post things, but you don't need to post anything. You can just grab things from there and you can edit the things you are grabbing or just go there to see what kind of ideas teachers have done with this um, with this resource and then just make it your own after you've you've gotten there because there's a lot of there's a lot of hidden potential in the smart notebook um and it's, it's a great resource like don't be scared to just jump into the technology and try it out and play around with it because that's where you'll learn stuff and i think the other piece is like not knowing in this covid life that we're living right now when we may go remote um it's just important for those kids to start practicing with those technology technology yeah pieces just in case we have to go remote again um and because they're we're living in the 21st century where we live and technology is their life they they love it so it's important for them to just start to get some of these skills that they're going to need in their future so Catherine, what advice do you have for teachers wanting to uh venture into using google slides with uh with their students and these types of interactive learning activities um, my tip would be to find a non-threatening um, topic. Sometimes the curriculum, we're, we're really heavy with the curriculum and wanting to make sure that we've covered everything in the program of studies. So themed weeks like reading week and holidays are a great chance for you to use a new resource. So um, I'm a grade one teacher, so I really wanted to get my kids to learn um, how to move things on Google Slides and how to size pictures and how to use a text box. So I created a resource um, for next week called Halloween um, Fun. I'm lucky enough to work with Jody, who I can collaborate with so I will share a I will begin creating it and then I'll ask for some advice so this is um, something that I created for next week so I have three ghosts they're all the same size and I want the kids to learn to with their finger which is a is something that they need to practice especially when they don't have a lot of practice with using iPads or Google Slides I want them to create these three ghosts in different sizes and then like I said, I've talked to Jody and Jody suggested this would be a good chance for you to put in some curriculum, like how many ghosts are there? And then they can begin learning the text, how to put in or insert a text box. So it's a non-threatening chance. That's my tip is to find a non-threatening chance um, that's more, that's fun and engaging so that they begin to learn how to practice. Because if we're so focused on making sure that we've covered all of the outcomes, um, and you're getting your kids to use technology or you're trying to learn a new resource yourself, um, it just is almost like too many new things, and too many things that you need to cross your T's and dot your I's with that the fun and the engagement kind of um, is no longer there. So here's another slide, like I want them to learn to insert photos because um, eventually I want them to have in grade one, I want them to um, insert all the animals that they can think of that, um, are gonna ha um, hibernate and all the animals that spur change color in the winter, but they're not there yet because they haven't practiced inserting a photo. Whereas next week we're gonna do a haunted house. And now what are some things that you could add and insert? So this is just a chance for them to kind of practice um, in a non-threatening way. So Jody, your advice of finding uh, pre-made templates that you can modify and Catherine, your advice on building the technology skills in sort of uh, fun, non-threatening ways uh, through, for, through fun themes or activities uh, before you head into some of the more academic tasks. Uh, both really great ideas. Thank you both so much uh, for sharing and um, I really appreciate you um, sharing these great ideas as well as these resources with Alberta teachers. No problem, thank you. Thank you.